And we are back on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT&T. We're back in the house. We got smiles on our face because this is our job, right? This is what we do. We talk about the game, and then we do what? We move forward to next week, right, Arch? On to Carolina. On On to to Carolina. Carolina. (laughs) I'm Derek Rack. This is Dave Archer, DJ Shockley. We're going to break down everything that happened last week. Here is what we are covering today, the good and the bad. We will talk about some good. And we got to talk about the bad, too, because sometimes that's just to. how it goes. Golly. Yeah, we have to. Um, then we will talk about we will talk about the Carolina Panthers and, and how that matchup has become a little bit more intriguing. And then maybe if we have time, Halloween story time. Oh, boy, that could be interesting. Mm. OK, anyway, um, let's get to it. The good and the bad arch. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's go one positive and negative takeaway from the game. Kind of more 30,000 foot level, if you will. 30,000 feet. 30, looking 30. Yeah, this is like, this 30. is not deep X's and O's. This yeah. is like a good and a bad that Drone you saw height. from the game. Positive without a question is the, the mentality, uh, the way the team plays. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you're down 21, nothing. And I think people were saying, okay, I can still get the target or whatever they want to do, you know, and, <laughs> And all of a sudden, you look up and it's twenty eight seventeen. Yep. So okay. that kind of deal is what. Now there are some real issues with the ability to throw it with some effectiveness mm-hmm. when you have to. Yep. And yep. I think that's an area they're going to have to attack. Yep, I agree with that. DJ, what do you got? Good and the bad. Uh, I, that's the first thing similar came to my mind as well as just the effort. When you watch the game, regardless of the score, you can't. You, you just don't know what the score is because these guys play so hard. I yep. think the effort is there. I think the fight that Arch talks about definitely stands out because, like you mentioned, I mean, these guys could have easily 21-0 on the road. He had a big win last week. Well, we played good last week. It's just, you know, they just better than this week. It wasn't that scenario. You could yeah. tell that these guys continue to fight and these guys continue to, you know, try to, you know, get this game a little bit closer. And obviously, I think the bad, too many explosive. Gave yeah. up too many big plays in this ball game. Too many, you know, 15-plus yardage plays. I mean, I, the number is is re, is ridiculous. I, I, I I you think I heard you, you say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, cause <laughs> Come on with it. I it heard you. Wait, 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 wait. I looked him up, and then I heard Arch talking about it, and I was like, oh, I missed some. So there are definitely too many explosive. We, we don't even need the numbers. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. Let's just say <laughs> there were too many. Yeah, yeah, there were too many. Yeah, it's, we don't need to go into the actual number. There was too many yeah, of right. them. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Uh, yeah, the good, I would say, was the, the kind of the – the turn of events right before halftime, right, made the game exciting. The fact that they get an explosive play, they come back with a special teams play, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a minute, this this may not be a blowout as it kind of was turning into early on. Um, but And then I would say the bad is this team cannot play catch up. Like you can't afford to get yourself down with the style of the play that they are. They know that they need to run the rock. We're able to run the rock like we've been doing throughout the course of the season. And this team right now is just mm-hmm. not built to put the ball through the air and play catch up when you get behind. Because you you can sit there and say, this is our identity and we like to run the football, but you can only do that for so long when right. you're trailing by two and three scores. That Right now, this team just not built to put the ball in the air and score two quick touchdowns to get back in the game. So let's go into it a little bit more. Um, Arthur Smith said after the game, you know, guys, I, I thought about this, right? As players – and over in the building as coaches, they don't make excuses, right? You come into the game, you don't have two of two of corners in the lineup, and then A.J. Terrell comes out on the very first defensive possession. He's yeah. not coming back in the game. So now you don't have your two starting corners against arguably one of the better passing offenses in the NFL, right? But at the end of the day, like, you don't make excuses in the NFL, Arch. Like, they don't get paid to make excuses. Like, nobody – wants to hear that out of Arthur Smith's mouth that, oh, well, we didn't have our starting two corners. So if we did, we would have played a little. You never hear that mm-hmm. from somebody. But the fact of the matter is you have those two guys in the game, and maybe the the competition is a little bit different, but it's not. You just next man up philosophy, right? Well, let's put a Halloween twist on it. Okay, okay, let's do it. Because when Joe Burrow took his helmet off after the touchdown throw to Tyler Boyd, the fourth play of the game, mm-hmm. He his hair was sticking in the air and it looked till he looked a little pale. I was thinking Mike Myers because Michael <laughs> Myers he stabbed us repeatedly, yeah. repeatedly stabbed us to the tune of too many explosive yes. plays. But no, I I think that going into this game you knew it was going to be a tall order 
to defend. I think this is the best receiver core in the league. I think each one of those guys, you could make an argument. If they were somewhere else, they'd be a one on somebody else's roster. You sprinkle in Hayden Hurst, who's a solid pass-catching tight end, and Mixon and Piran, who can catch it out of the backfield and kind of change it up in the run game. They're about as good as it gets from a, from a skill position standpoint. Yes. Their bugaboo and their problems had been up front. Mm. And I thought they did a nice job of sorting through some of that. And we'll talk some of that. They sorted through some of the Falcon pressures. Um, so what was the question? I don't even remember what the question no, was. No, it's just it, it's hard to think that you're going to be able to match oh, up be against better. somebody with that when you don't have two starting corners. Well, and I think that that's – Let's be real now. You've got guys that are one on the depth chart. You've got guys that are two on the depth, and they're there for a reason. Right, exactly. Let's not let's not fool ourselves. There's guys that are starters, and then there's the next guy. Now, there may not be much of a drop down to the next guy, and you hope there's not. Yep. That's what depth is all about. But, you, yeah, you, you and, and, you, and then you throw in the fact that you're going against the best receiver core potentially in the league. Mm-hmm. That magnifies that gap even worse, right? I thought Cornell Armstrong. I thought Isaiah Oliver. I thought Darren Hall. I thought all of them played really hard and competed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not sure that it might not have been the similar situation if they hadn't been in there. Yeah. This group was firing on all cylinders. We weren't able to get to the quarterback, which is what you had to do is you had to disrupt him weren't able to disrupt his timing or where he was looking. Yeah. His first look ball coming out. And let me let me ask you this. This is completely well, it's on topic. Is there a better guy in the league on a back shoulder throw than it's, this dude? It's it's exactly what I was gonna say is even with the right coverage, we saw at least four or five back shoulder throws. I mean, the touchdown where, you know, Chase ends up going in and, you know, that's a back shoulder throw that, you know, it's hard to go against. I mean, there were a couple in the game. Armstrong got hit with one on the sideline. He was in perfect coverage. He was in phase. Yeah. Isaiah Oliver, same yeah. thing. You could not stop him. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you come off to the sideline on those and it's like you want to tell him, like, dude, you can't cover that any better. Yeah. Like, you can't be in better position. And it's one of those routes that I feel like, even when we were playing together, DJ, I don't feel like we threw back shoulder like they throw it now. Yeah. Like, it's become one of the biggest weapons, in not only in the NFL, but you see it in the college game. The good college quarterbacks that know how to drop the back shoulder in there is a huge weapon. And you're right, like, the fact that they've got – not only the timing, the chemistry, but just the dudes, right? They've got the dudes that can go and do it. And the well, thing the back that shoulder was born. The back shoulder was born in the run and shoot. Uh-huh. That's where it came from. And you'd see, and we'll have a guy this weekend that's going to visit with us, or not visit with us, but we'll be at the game this weekend. Hope you're down at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, Andre Risen's going to be in, be here at the game, uh, be a guest and be down there. Um, Risen was one of the best, the back shoulder throws. Um, think about Warren Moon and that crew that he threw to. Ropes. You know, yeah. those guys. So that was where it was born, but you're right. Nowadays, it's kind of, if you don't have it in your offense, then you're antiquated. And exactly. the other part about it is that when you have the chemistry, like you mentioned, the back shoulder throw becomes more of a high percentage throw. It, 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 it's one of those kind of throws there where it, it's easier to catch it because obviously the defense, the best got his back turned, but then – the receiver understands. Even if he's on top, there were times where the receiver was on top and they still threw the back shoulder yeah. throw because you got a better chance to come down with it. Well, well talk about how hard that. Let's let's real quickly dive into that because yep. we've we've thrown some here. I mean, Marcus has thrown a couple back shoulders. If you go back to the Seattle game, he did a great job of back shoulder and Kyle Pitts who mm-hmm. got on a wheel route, back shoulder Kyle Pitts with a throw Whatever in the Seattle it, game. How hard a throw is that? Everybody think, well, it's just an easy throw. You're still you're just under throwing it. But you've got a guy on a dead run. Right. Mm-hmm. That you talk about that. And the interesting thing is the way you throw it is different than any go route. Because obviously you want to hug the ceiling, but you're not throwing it at the guy. You're throwing it probably five, six yards to where he's going, but you're also throwing it on the rope where he can also find it. So it's a tough throw because the timing of it is really hard. Yeah. And I don't think people understand how tough it is to throw it and then complete it. It looks really simple when you're watching it, but you got to have that chemistry like you talked about. Exactly. Your receiver has to understand and your quarterback has to know where to put this football because there's sometimes you see back shoulder throws that don't even make it. Like or they're, they're throwing throw. too far inside, it's right. an interception. Exactly. Yeah. If you throw it too far inside, so it's right. a really tough throw. Yeah, throwing it back behind, uh, it's got to get up and down. Yeah. But yeah. you're right, the timing of it, like when the receiver is going to take the look back, when he's going to put the brakes on, and when it is executed, it looks like it's artwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just yeah. looks it was, like it's just beautiful. It was Sunday. Yeah, it was it Sunday. Was Sunday. Um, let's talk about this in the defense because Arch, you made a good point, and and I think. 
and when you, when you go back and look at a game like this, the average fan might say, well, you can't just let this team do it. You got to bring pressure. They brought pressure. <laughs> it wasn't like Dean Pease was, dro- was rushing three and dropping Man, eight. Like what? he tried to bring people to get the ball out of hands of Burrow, but it got picked up. And when you get your offensive line and everybody that's involved in pass protection on the same page, you get a running back picking up somebody off the slot and all that stuff gets picked up. And you can only just sit back and be like, oh gosh, here we go. Because you're making a gamble, right, yeah. Dave? Like you're making a gamble. I've got to get there before this man-to-man coverage ends up kind of exposing us, which it, that ended up happening. Well, you, you put yourself in Dean Pease's position. I can't show Burrow the same thing every time. Because we know in this league, we're going to figure out how to block that. Yep. And now I've got those guys we've already talked about running against your guys that might be in man coverage or maybe a man or two down in zone. Yep. You don't have enough people, right? So now I've got to mix it up. So now here comes four, but they're four different guys. It looks like two linemen and two backers are coming. Oh, the other side, you come again, and now it's three down linemen and the nickel's coming off the slot. So you're trying to mix up what the look looks like just to kind of try to keep them off balance. Yeah, I give Cincinnati a ton of credit. They did a really good job of picking stuff up. But you're mixing it up because of the guys in the back end, you don't have your full complement of players. Yep. And, and yep. remember, Mike Ford got hurt on a, on a special teams play. Mm-hmm. He's your backup nickel. You know, yeah. you, I mean, you didn't have D. Alford. He was your starting nickel. Right. So there were a lot of things going on. And I know everybody's got injuries. But it how it plays out with your team and how you can call plays, it, it comes into play. And so, but Dean, no question about it. Dean threw everything he could at him and still say stand behind and still try to make some plays and, and give Cincinnati credit. They for, just executed. For the fans that's listening to what Arch is saying right now, the, the important part to, to kind of take in is the fact that you're trying to force the quarterback to think an extra half a second or make him hold a football just a half a beat more so that on the back end you can get in the spot you need to. Or you confuse him enough where he holds on to it, has to throw it away, or he throws it in the coverage. And if you can do that, then you got a chance. And I think that's what Dean Pease was trying to do, was to show him a lot of different looks, bring guys from different you know areas, and force him to hold it. I mean, the, there was a one play, you can, you can hear it on the TV copy, he's yelling, Ricky, Ricky, which is slide the line right. And this is where DeAngelo Malone gets his sack. And they obviously slide the wrong way thinking – the blitz was coming from that side, but it ends up, you know, they don't pick it up right. And this was, you know, one to three sacks in the second half. But those were instances where it's not like he's sitting back. A lot of people thought, oh, they played a lot of zone. No, he played a lot of a lot of coverage, but you also brought the house at him a, a lot too in his ball game. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what else the MPs can dial up going forward in the future because you're gonna have to. Well, guys, they're, 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 you're not going to face teams like this every weekend. This yeah. team you're going to play this weekend, completely different than what you just faced. Yep. This team, was is all they're going to do is line the quarterback up in the gun and they're going to throw it. The, line, the run game is a change-up. Yeah. Okay, so now there's different ways to combat that. I can slow play it where the way we played Tampa. How many times did Brady throw the ball underneath against Tampa? Yep. Yep. But the game shortened, and they only had 21 points on the board, and they kept throwing the ball underneath. Now, yep. they made some plays and moved the chains, but you look up, and it's only 21 points on the board. I've still got a chance to win that game. Mm-hmm. This game, you gave up. we gave up the explosives, and this receiver core is adept at finding the hole in the zone. If I bring one guy out and I'm going to play zone behind it, they had a guy Replace. in that hole. Yep. Yeah. They replaced our guy every time, and you saw those stick routes in the slot. Boom, boom, boom. He just went right down the field. And then when you decided to commit and play man, I'm going to take shots. That's when they went over the top, yeah. So we talked about the explosives. 537 yards of total offense, 481 through the air. Obviously, that's going to make for a long day. Guys, let's flip it over, though. Let's talk about the other side of the ball because – The offense didn't quite help out the occasion a whole lot either. 214 yards of offense, and I think the biggest difference, I kind of talked about it at the top, it was not the dominant run game that we've been able to put out on the field throughout the course of the season so far that's really kept things, slowed the game down a little bit, kept possession on the field, not quite the same. Where did the Falcons' offense go wrong offensively, Arch? Well, early in the game, you're operating, and I say early in the game, it was the first two drives of the game. I think you went three and out and four and out in the first two drives. You didn't. The efficiency level was going to have to be through the chart against yeah. this team yeah. because you needed to possess the ball because I would argue, yeah, you knew you were going to give up plays. You didn't know you were going to give up that many plays defensively, and certainly it wasn't a performance that those guys will look back on it with a lot of pride. 
but you knew it was going to be a long day for that group. So I need to shorten the day for them by playing offense. Yep. I need to possess the football. They didn't do that. Three and out. You get you get third and five, don't convert. Yep, please, you get yeah. third and three. Don't those convert. are the first. Those are the first two drives. Didn't you convert, don't convert. Yeah. Yep. And you look up, and they've had they've had the ball three times. It's twenty one to nothing. Yeah. Yep. And you didn't do anything. You had the ball for seven plays. Yeah. So that onus, and you t- we talk about it all the time, and these guys emphasize complimentary football, and yep. we got to it, got to it a little later. Yeah. And I know you're going to get there, but we got to it some. But that can't happen. You can't be that efficient. You got where you wanted to. This team is going to have to live in third and medium. Yep. Mm-hmm. This year, that's where they're going to have to live. Yep. It's great to get a first down on, on, on first down or get a first down on second down. By the way, that, that team that we just played, Cincinnati, faced their first third down on the last play of the second drive, and it was a third and one goal line dive for a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first third down they'd face. Yep. We got two first and third downs in our first two drives. You have to convert those. Right. That's where we have to live. We got to own those. Uh, DJ, I mentioned 214 yards. 75 came from one play, right? So, the, and it was a great play, right? It was kind of a good little run of momentum that, that I talked about to kind of cut things, make it a little interesting right before halftime. But was there anything from the running game or that stuck out to you that was different, that, that wasn't present the last few weeks when they were able to run the football so effectively that really contributed to the, the lack of production on offense? You know, first, let's give – Arthur Smith and in that offense for that particular call that went for 75 yards. Obviously, you could have sat on the ball. You could have been thinking, hey, let's get into halftime. You know, we get the ball back, you know, after half. And, you know, we'll, we'll go down and, you know, we'll try to make this a ball game. And you get quarters coverage and you go scissors concept and you got a, you got a corner out, safety bites on it, goes for it. You got one of the fastest guys in the league in the mere bird going, you know, down the middle on the post. And give Marcus Mario a lot of credit. That's a big time throw. Yeah. That's a monster throw put in that moment, dime. and put it in there. When you look at the, the the scope of this game, obviously, when when you talk about those third down situations, not being able to pick up more yards or positive yards on first and second down was a big deal. Because when you when you get into third and long, like Arch mentions, it makes it a lot tougher on any offense, let alone an offense that you know wants to live like Arch mentioned in third and medium. But you, you average just a little bit over three yards in the rush game. And when you're not targeting guys a lot in this ball game, that also hurts you as well. I think Pitts had five targets. Drake had one target in the ball game, and you were four of ten on third down. The execution up front wasn't there. The execution throwing the football obviously wasn't there. And quite frankly, I don't think Cincinnati was – I'll say I don't think they were afraid of you taking a deep shot. They uh-huh. weren't afraid of you pushing the football down the field because, let's be honest, for you know, first few ball games, everything has been kind of intermediate, mm-hmm. and you have some shot plays here and there, but nothing about the offense right now scares you going downfield. So they were able to load the box, they were able to change the line of scrimmage, they were able to do some things up front that kind of stymied you where you weren't able to get uh, the run game going. So, um, Dave, the words are, "We're on to Carolina." This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. So let's move on. Let's talk about Carolina because I know that that was probably when you have a game like that against Cincinnati, you want to talk about it, you want to learn from it and you're ready to go to the next one, right? Let's not let's not continue to live that one down. So Carolina as you mentioned, Arch, let's talk about a much different team, right? Much different team than Cincinnati Bengals. They coming off a victory against Tampa Bay, but they also were in the news last week because they traded away arguably one of the most athletic players in the National Football League, Christian McCaffrey, out to San Francisco. So let's talk about the difference that Atlanta is going to see this week facing Carolina than what that monster was they saw last week. Yeah, you're not going to see one of the better two-way backs in football. McCaffrey is as good a receiver as he is a runner. Now, some of that is added up, and that's why he hasn't been available, right? right? He's not the biggest dude in the world, so he gets an opportunity out on the West Coast where he played college ball, and good for him. 
But now you get more of a pounder back. You're going to get Deontay Foreman, who's a bigger back, was here. He's a bigger back that has the ability that's going to run similar. I don't think he has quite as much juice as Algier does, mm -hmm. but he's going to run that way. They're going to play the game similar to the way we play it on offense. They want to run the football. Mm -hmm. Their quarterback can move. P.J. Uh, Walker is a guy that has some ability to move around. Um, Baker Mayfield, don't know about him. I guess he's still out. We don't even know. They didn't really talk about Baker Mayfield, but after you get a W – I would suggest keeping that guy in the game. So P.J. Walker will be in. D.J. Moore is a small receiver that has some has some juice to him. It can run, move around. Uh, Chuba Hubbard's the change-up back. He's a guy at Oklahoma State that had a great career in Oklahoma State and really hasn't really shown much up yep. here in, in the league. He's a guy that's going to get more carries. But they're going to look a lot like we do on offense um, with the want to run the football, play action shots, and a quarterback that can move around. Well, I think it's interesting to note that Carolina, minus Christian McCaffrey, is able to beat Tampa 21-3. But not only that, I mean, stymie the running game, right? Their defense just shut down Leonard Fournette, Rashad White. Leonard Fournette, eight carries, 19 yards in that game. And yep. he's he's been a difference maker for him. Not only is he such a physical presence going downhill running the football, but now he's catching the ball out of the backfield. But they kind of shut him down. So, so Arch kind of talked about the offense, but the defense is going to be playing with a lot of juice, a lot of momentum, because they basically just shut down Tom Brady and company last week. And two guys who was in the talks, similar as Christian McCaffrey, everybody thinking, you know, Carolina was trying to have a fire sale. And the two other guys that they were talking about on that defensive side, Brian Burns and Derek Brown in the middle, are two guys that are really good players, mm -hmm. guys – and Brian Burns, who can get around the edge and make it miserable on your quarterback. Derrick Brown's a guy who lives in the middle and has come on on the last few. I mean, Shaq Thompson is one of those athletic linebackers that can go sideline to sideline. This is a defense that's athletic enough on the outside and in, in uh, up through the middle that can concern you guys. Obviously, yeah. what they did last week was, was, was really good, obviously only allowing three points, but they're going to get after you. One of the things that I think people were excited about coming into this season with Carolina was their defense. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you were looking for a quarterback to fill that void on the offensive side, but defensively, you thought they would be stout and would be good, and obviously last week they showed it. Yeah, this was a defense that was, I think, two in the league last year. Uh -huh. So this they've got all those guys back. Your tour, Gross Matos, comes off the other side to get out of Penn State. Yep opposite Brian Burns. So they got two edge guys, young edge guys that are long that can get after you. You mentioned Walker or uh, the big guy Brown in the middle. Yep. Um, their linebacker core is active, can go get it. Uh, in their secondary, they've invested in some free agency in their in their secondary, especially at the, at the, at the safety spot. Uh, that they're, they're solid back there now. Yep. Xavier Woods back there. You got some guys back that can play. So that'll be that's going to be a really uh, really tough test to go against that defense. I talked a little bit about the running game. Sixteen carries, forty six yards for Tampa. Tom Brady, thirty two of forty nine, two hundred ninety yards, but zero touchdowns. Mm. So like that defense is going to look at it and say, "That's fine. Yeah. You threw for two ninety. You didn't yeah. punch the ball into the end zone." Well, and Evans drops a touchdown. Evans yeah. is wide open on a post route. He hits him right in the hands. He drops the football. So you know, in all in all, divulging everything there, he <laughs> screwed that up. But we, we held, you know, there was similar numbers against Atlanta's defense. You go back, he threw for a few more yards against Atlanta's defense. But if you go back and look at Fournette's numbers against Atlanta, he didn't do anything against Atlanta either. So they're, they're like Cincinnati. They want to – the run of the game is a change-up for yeah, them. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't get too caught up in what they did. Oh, they stoned the – we did we stoned the run game against Tampa. So that – what I think you got to be concerned about is uh, their edge rushers and, and can mm -hmm. you get some kind of pass game out of it? And and make no mistake, it's not just Marcus Mariota. When you start talking about throwing the football, we always want to point at the quarterback. And I know I've kind of been on, on, on the Mariota bandwagon, and I still am. I think Marcus is doing a lot of good things. Um, he's not getting a lot of opportunities to yeah. do them. Yeah. And just like a running back that runs it, you get better the more carries – Quarterback kind of gets in a rhythm, so the more opportunities you get, but you have to be able to protect. Yep. And you got to be able to, so you got to be able to do some things. And so let's not, don't just focus on the quarterback if you're an Atlanta fan. Look at the whole thing. What opportunities is, is he getting? What is he doing with those opportunities? I think, uh, how many attempts did he have this last weekend? I don't even 13. know how many. 13 yeah. attempts. So 13 attempts, limited number of plays. But if you go back and look, you're probably talking about maybe. Seven full pattern plays, yeah. full full pattern throws, and that's that that makes a difference, yep. you know. And so, 
Um, I think I would be careful about, you know, laying all this in Marcus Mariota's fault right. or in, in his feet. DJ, we talked a lot about Atlanta's defense against Cincinnati, and we talked a little bit about Carolina. So my question to you is, Falcons offense, what needs to be the focal point? What do they need to get back to to find success in this game against Carolina? I think it goes back to early down success. Yeah. And I think that's where if you live in a positive light on early down success, where there's even throwing the ball on first down. I mean, there's easier ways than maybe pushing the ball down the field to have success on first down. Arch mentioned it a few minutes ago. It's okay to get another first down on first down. It's okay to, to, you know, make it, you know, get seven, eight yards on first down, throw on a hit drive. You got off coverage on the outside, and you see it just fling it out there, give Drake a catch, well, yeah. whatever it may be. But I think early down success in this game, whether you're running it or throwing it, is beneficial for this offense, and it opens up so much more. And obviously, you can see the creativity in this offense. There yeah. were a couple uh, pre-snap motions and things that were going on. I mean – there was a play in the game. Uh, Cincinnati just made a good play there. Their safety. I mean, we, we got Drake coming in motion, and he goes behind him, and then we fake it right, and we flick it back left to Algier, and, the, you know, the safety just ends up making a good play. I mean, there's so much good things that are going on for this offense. You just got to find a way to be more efficient with it. But early down success for me is where I think this offense has to live if they're going to be successful. Dave, is there anything – offensively that you you would like to see more of like we talked about the shot to Demir Bird does do you feel like they need to take more of those do they need to take more uh throws out to the perimeter to stretch the defense from side to side to maybe open up holes down the middle is there anything we're just kind of spitballing well, sure here, right? you, anytime as you play quarterback you gotta take some shots right yeah I, I think if you look big picture you gotta think about the balls that Arthur Smith's juggling. Yes. Okay, so I'm beat up on defense. Uh, maybe, I don't know what's going to look like this weekend, yeah. secondary-wise. So I, I've got to put a premium on playing high-quality, efficient offense. Yeah. I've got to keep the football. Ball know? possession. So if I take a shot on first down from my own 20-yard line, yeah, and we miss. 10, now yeah. it's second and 10. Yeah. Okay. I've got to go get a first down on two downs. Now it becomes Canadian League football, right? I got two <laughs> downs to get a first down, or we got to, we got to punt it. Yeah. And now my, my now my defense is back out on the field. So you're trying to protect, not to the point where you can't play defense. Not saying that, but you want to protect each other to a certain extent. Um, so that's got to be something he's keeping in mind. But you always want to take you always want to take some shot. I think you have to. Shock talked about how Cincinnati was not necessarily respecting, it. and that may be why they got that was deep. My question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's going to give you right shock. Right. That's going to give you the opportunity to go. Ooh, wait a no, wait a minute. And then they'll see this on tape. They'll see that on tape. They'll see yep. Bird. You know, and they'll say, well, okay, well, we can't get too nosy. Yeah, on the or they're going to take a shot at yep. us. And so a couple of those a game. You know, mix up who it is. Bird. You got guys that can get deep. Pitts can get deep. Yep. You know, those kind of things. That's what yep. I mean. Is it a happy medium? You think to say, okay, we want to be efficient. We want to be effective. But is there a happy medium? I know a lot of fans are going to say, do we just do it? Not say just to do it, just to be doing it. Yeah. But do you do it to say, hey, you need to back up a little bit. We need to create the illusion that we will throw the football deep. We will push the football down the field. Do you go about it that way? Because I know a lot of people look at it like, all right, let's just throw a shot here just because we can. Or is it to the fact that you just talk about we got to be efficient in the game. Where, where does the, the happy medium lie yeah. for Arthur Smith? Like you say, it's a lot of, you know, he's juggling a lot, but do you do that still just to say, all right, we're not just going to allow you to put eight in the box? I think he has to, I think, and I think he understands that. And I think that we, we talked, he and I talked on his coach's show on Monday about the self-scout thing, yeah. okay? And that's a real deal. And I know a lot of people, you know, people that are outside the game throw it around as a cliche. Yeah. Oh, they're self – no, they dive deep into what they're looking at from a tendency standpoint. What are we doing? Well, the tendencies are that we're going to throw bootleg and throw it in the flat, or we got little over routes we're going to throw it to, and we're not taking any shots down the field. So it could be as much as a tendency breaker Absolutely. to say, wait a minute, they are going to take some shots. Now you have a shot on tape of that. And, oh, by the way, makes it fun for the guys on offense. Yeah. <laughs> if, I need, if I know I get to take a shot down the field, I'm yeah. going to make a big play. I get kind of excited about that, and I think that there's probably some excitement that needs to be fused into something. Drake London. I mean, Drake's 
not really had much to do with anything the last few weeks, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. he sees Bird go over the top. Hey, I want one of those myself, and Pitts want one of those himself, mm-hmm. just to inject some fun into it. And I think that I think there's something to that as well. Yeah, and the onus then goes back to, onto Arthur Smith is when to call that play, mm-hmm. right? It's it's one thing to just say, hey, we need to do it. But there's, it's got to be in the right time mm-hmm. because every down is so precious, as we talked about, for them staying on the field, yeah. staying in manageable situations. Yeah, and oh, by the way, it's okay if you throw an incompletion. Yeah. What you don't want is it's second and 18 now. Right. And I get a sack. Yep. So we got to know that we can protect and do it when we get a shot. Second so and not... 18 or that shot turns right, into right, a pick, right? Because right? yeah. well, those are all working yeah. against you. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you want to get the defense to back up. And, and I've, I've watched this video this week, guys. You guys have seen the backup, Terry. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the guy, the fireworks and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, just go on YouTube and just type in backup, Terry. Okay? <laughs> and you will thank me later for laughing. And the reason why I, I use that to set it up is let's just have a little bit of fun before we finish up. Any Halloween pranks that you guys remember playing football or anything – um, like it was a certain player. Did you go to a Halloween party when you were playing? Um, I remember Matt Schaub used to always have a Halloween party. And I mean, Marshall they Halloween would get party. like dressed up. To, I'm talking about professional makeup artists and all that other yeah. stuff. And I'm like looking for something in my closet that I can just throw <laughs> in real quick. But is there anything stick out from a Halloween perspective? I know it's NFL and it's always about business, but sometimes it's about having fun. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Best costume for, for me and my wife. We were in San Diego at the time with the Chargers. Yep. Uh, we had a huge uh, party with the team, and my wife and I went as the Blues Brothers. <laughs> and I still remember laughing, shoving stuffing into her to make her look like John Belushi. <laughs> she was like this wide. Oh, stuffing. I love it. We also had a, my best costume for me personally was Indiana Jones. Uh, look just like Indiana oh, Jones. Oh, that's great. It was Indiana I Jones. Love it. We need I love it. I see it. I see it in the face. I, I do. Yeah. You had your satchel and everything? Oh. I had it all. I had it all. Whip, <laughs> gun. Ready. What you got, uh, BJ? Anything? No, but I, I don't remember much uh it come from Halloween. Come on, man. I don't, man, to be honest. To be to be honest. Uh I remember uh how about just a week ago? Going back to a week ago, and you it's funny you bring up Michael Myers. We watched the Halloween Ends movie, right? And I'm intrigued. I'm like, ooh, I want to do this. So I ordered the mask, I got the whole outfit, oh. and I'm at home, right? My wife, my kids are sitting on the sofa, and when you walk into the living room, your back is to me. <laughs> I walk in with the, I mean, I got the little hair, I got the mask. I'll show, I'm, I'm going to bring it next week so you guys can see it. <laughs> oh, the mask is great. Oh, so I walk in behind them, and it's pitch black dark in uh, our kitchen, and they're in the living room. And all of a sudden, I make a little noise. And all of them turn around, and I'm literally just standing there oh, with the mask. No. I got the I got the machete right here, <laughs> nice. and they go to screaming. And the look on my son's face, and then after he said, "I didn't know what to do. I was so scared." <laughs> this is literally just a week ago, and I've, I've got. Are you gonna so break it out? So after that, so after that, yeah. Now I've ordered the Freddy Krueger nice. mask. Oh, so, oh. And they don't even know it yet. So I'm gonna bring this mask. I'm gonna show it to you. All right, um, and it's. It's it's so spot on. It, it's pretty good. I scared. So the living. my my follow up would be how much trouble did you get in with the wife? She was mad. <laughs> she was mad. But I was dying laughing, so I didn't care. It was good for me. I enjoyed it. So you see she how this, get over it. You cathartic. see how this dynamic Very works cathartic. because not only did say he love it, he ordered another yeah, one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I he's mean, doing it again. Oh yeah. No doubt. <laughs> good, you got good to it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. One of the one of the best pranks I ever played though Halloween. We were in San Diego as well, and we rigged it up to where. There was a, a line that came from an upstairs window down to it was tied off to a bush that would go right over the top of the walkway that uh-huh. came up to get candy. Yep. And so I had I had a ghost rigged up where you had like a ball in there with a sheet around yep. it. Yep. And at night you let it go and it rolled down through there and it almost like a ghost would come in. No. <laughs> well so so I had to try it out. So I called one of my neighbors, this dude that I knew next door. Yeah. Just the guy, hey, can you come over man? I I need some help with this deal. And so I did it. And let it go. <laughs> my, my, yeah, I played the music. I played the music. No, my dude went into the bushes. Man. <laughs> I said, "Man, this is for the kids." Are you kidding me? Uh, dude, was... dove in the bushes. He thought something. Was, he said he was done. He thought he had. 
So yeah. <laughs> so it worked. Man, I said, well, out with maybe, rashes on his arms. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this to the kids. Maybe this dude just reacted that way, right? So yeah. Uh, so, what yeah. Arch failed to mention is his neighbor will never help him with uh, anything else from this point over moving yeah. forward. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even call me to come over no more. That's right. Right. What you got? What you got? Oh, I I was living with you guys. <laughs> I don't have nothing. I don't have anything. I mean, I've oh, I've gone man. to some really good Halloween parties. Um, Best you know, costume. Um. So I, you guys know my daughters play softball. Yep. One year. Uh, I dressed up as my daughter as softball, and she dressed up as me, the old football, football player. player. So like we, we swapped, great. right? So I wore her softball uniform. She wore my old football stuff. I like Obviously, that. my jerseys like go all the way down to, <laughs> to their ankles. I like that. Uh, so it was like a like a sports swap, if you I will. Like, I like uh, it's fun to do with the kids and stuff. Last yeah. question: Do you guys do horror movies? Absolutely. I just told you I watch Halloween ends. Yeah, I, I do them. Uh, I think that they've they've they're struggling to do them right now. Yeah. You know, it used to be that just the subtle hum- uh, subtle stuff like shocks talking about mm-hmm. where all of a sudden a light shows up and there's there's michael myers standing mm-hmm. with that white mask yeah. that's all you need man right yeah. do i need to rip a guy Wait, apart and stuff like that i mean come yeah. on yeah. yeah it's almost like everything's more extreme the subtle days, humor right? yeah or the subtle scary right um yeah. me zero no Real horror movies won't do it won't watch them really nope. Nope. No. nightmares for weeks won't eat. like i see the commercials for the new halloween movies yeah. and i almost want to turn the commercial no like ain't happening come not on, doing right? it nope. come on i mean right? i saw a scream back in the day and stuff oh, and yeah. this is like that was probably, that was yeah. probably the last one ever right. scream freddy krueger no i mean i saw all those as a the... kid but like you're now you won't watch it now nope Guess well, you could say I got a little yeah. soft. But there'll, be, there'll be a guy dressed up this weekend at Mercedes <laughs> Benz Stadium, and he'll look like Todd McClure. Oh, it will be Todd. McClure. Okay. Todd gonna go into the mud duck. Come on, mud so duck. Make sure you join us at uh, mud Make sure you join us at uh, Mercedes Benz. All right. So week. join us. Join Arch uh, at Mercedes Benz Stadium. Atlanta Falcons against Carolina Panthers. Hoping to get a rebound, get back to 500, and uh, get back to the winning ways and what they do best. You shall not pass, dude. Like stop nightmares that's gonna do it for the falcons audible presented by at&t i gotta get out of here because dj's gonna creep me out we'll see you next week right here thanks appreciate it, everyone